Live from ABC7, this is Eyewitness News at 7 p.m. on LA56. In Paris, more than a million people rally against terrorism in what's become the largest demonstration in France's history. And here at home, another thousand people turn out in downtown L.A. to show their support for France. And a man accused of a multiple carjackings is shot and killed by police in Southgate. Good evening, I'm Giovanna Lotta. I'm Jory Rand. Welcome to Eyewitness News uh, at 7 on LA56, LA's only live local newscast at 7 p.m. More than a million people filled the streets of Paris today along with leaders from around the world joining in. This as we learn more about the suspects of last week's deadly terrorist attacks, including a possible connection to ISIS. ABC's Matt Gutman has the latest from Paris. Chants of Charlie as more than a million people poured into the streets of Paris. Nearly every person with a banner, a poster, or a pencil proclaiming Je suis Charlie honoring the 17 people killed in the attacks on the satirical newspaper Charlie Hebdo and a kosher grocery store last week. We have to be here in the memory of these people, innocent people, and to say with a smile that we're not afraid. Spearheading the march, dozens of leaders from around the world linking arms in a show of solidarity. This is the chant we've been hearing all day, Charlie. You don't see almost any security around here, yet people say right now they feel safe. But as the people rallied, the hunt for the most wanted woman in the world went international. Hayat Boumediene, the only known living suspect, escaped France before the attacks, fleeing to Spain, then Turkey, before eventually crossing into Syria. Al-Qaeda in Yemen initially claimed responsibility, but new information this morning about Boumediene's life partner. An image from a video posted by an ISIS supporter showing Ahmedi Koulibaly claiming credit for these terrorist attacks and pledging support to ISIS. At this point, we don't have any credible information that would allow us to make a determination as to which organization was responsible. Despite increased concern about other terror plots, the million plus who gathered in Paris Sunday refusing to live in fear. Matt Gutman, ABC News, Paris. Los Angeles joined other cities around the world in support of the rally in Paris. About a thousand people turned out in downtown L.A. to take a stance against terrorism. Eyewitness News reporter Mark Cota Robles has more on the local event. Today I think of the victims. I think of a journalist of Charlie Hebdo. With rain lingering over downtown Los Angeles. For solidarity. Yes. Hundreds stood united outside City Hall, their spirits not dampened. By standing together and refusing to hate, that we will win. French flags were waved and pencils held in the air, a symbolic gesture to protect freedom of expression. All of it paying tribute to the journalists, artists, policemen and hostages who lost their lives this past week in France. We want to mourn the victims. We want to show solidarity with uh, French people. We want to be part of a worldwide movement of mass demonstration. Part of me wished I was there to be with my family, and it was very difficult. And across this region, there are more than 20,000 French nationals that are registered with the consulate in Los Angeles. Many of them are here today. Some even brought old copies of Charlie Hebdo. I have my pencil, and it's a golden one. Because words are golden sometimes and powerful, we cannot be uh, threatened by um, the terrorists and lose our freedom. Most everyone we spoke to said they came to be with their French community during a dark yet important moment in their country's history. Some believe life in France won't be the same. We need to change things in France now. We need to understand that we don't we don't want this to happen again. In downtown Los Angeles, Mark Kutarobulus, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Mark, and stay with ABC7 for continuing coverage of the terror attack in Paris and rallies of support for the victims. You can also get the latest on our website, abc7.com, as well as on Facebook and Twitter.
We have breaking news. Officials say divers have retrieved a black box from the crashed Air Asia flight on the bottom of the Java, Java Sea. The plane's tail section was brought ashore yesterday, but the cockpit voice and flight data recorders were no longer attached. Indonesian ships had detected pinging sounds coming from two areas. Divers had about two weeks left before the signals from the boxes go silent. Meanwhile, 48 bodies of the 162 people on board have now been recovered. Officials believe most of the bodies are still inside the main fuselage, which has yet to be found. Rough seas continue to hamper the search and recovery operation. And turning now to our local weather, folks had their umbrellas and coats out for another day. The rain was really coming down on the 5 freeway in Orange County, as you can see there. Windshield wipers were working overtime. It was tough to even see the road. Meantime, the rain wasn't coming down as hard in Woodland Hills. Still, drivers were taking it slow because the roads were slick. So, is this wet weather gone for good? Let's ask Danny Romero. Danny? All right, I'll have the answer for you, Giovanna and Jory. Uh, in a short way, uh, not quite yet. There is still a lot of moisture in the air. We can see some of it on the live Mega Doppler 7000 HD. So there are some areas still experiencing some light rain, even some snow and ice up around Wrightwood. The green indicating the light rain uh, just south of Little Rock, Mount Baldy, some rain and or some ice and snow mixing together. Crestline, some light rain right now. Big Bear with light rain, also a little bit of ice and snow mixed in there. We see some other areas are fairly dry through Southern California. Just a, a little spot of rain around Commerce, Southgate. Uh, then a lot of dryness there through Hawthorne, Compton, and then down around Torrance and Lomita. A little light rain coming down right now. And we're seeing conditions staying that ever-changing lightning kind of way now. However, we will see a real change in the weather in the week ahead. I'll tell you about that seven day when I come back in just a bit right now, Jory and Giovanna. Go ahead. Okay, Danny, looking forward to it. Police in Southgate shoot and kill a man following two failed carjacking attempts. Eyewitness News reporter Amy Powell has the latest on the investigation. The coroner removed the body of a man shot and killed by Southgate police from the 8900 block of Kaufman Avenue. Authorities say the suspect ran into the neighborhood after an attempted carjacking. I heard about six gunshots really loud and uh, just woke me out of bed. You heard the, the cars coming and you heard the screeching and, you know, I still waited before I looked out the window. Police were called to the area around four this morning. They say the suspect attempted a carjacking at a nearby jack-in-the-box. The carjacking victim was talking to police when he spotted the suspect walking along the street and pointed him out to the officers. According to investigators, the suspect ran away and tried to carjack another vehicle. After the suspect failed at his second carjacking attempt, he ran into the neighboring residential yards between Aneta Avenue and Kaufman Avenue. As the search for the suspect was underway, the suspect emerged on the sidewalk of the 8900 block of Kaufman Avenue armed with a handgun. He confronted Southgate police officers and an officer involved shooting occurred. The investigation went on all day. Many residents were unable to leave their homes. This is a really quiet neighborhood, you know, very well policed. You know, we're close by the park, a lot of kids around, so something new for us. Authorities recovered a handgun at the scene that they say was carried by the suspect. No one else was injured during this incident. In Southgate, Amy Powell, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. The search is on for four armed suspects who tied up two people and ransacked their homes in Palos Verdes Estates. It happened on the 1700 block of Lower Paseo La Cresta about 8 o'clock last night. Authorities say the suspects took an unknown number of valuables. The victims were able to free themselves and call police when the suspects took off. Investigators say one victim suffered a slight injury from being tied up. Detectives do not yet know if the couple was targeted. And a Coachella man is under arrest for felony DUI and child endangering after a minor traffic collision injured two of his three young passengers. Police say Moises Montefar was uh, under the influence of alcohol and on probation from a prior DUI when he crashed into another vehicle Saturday evening. Paramedics treated the children for minor injuries. Montefar has been booked at the county jail in the city of Indio. The juveniles ages 5, 10, and 11 were placed with a family member. An investigation is underway following a deadly <laughs> shooting during an alleged robbery in Riverside County. It happened at the DSC Logistics Building in Eastvale at Rochester and Philadelphia. Investigators say around midnight, a security guard came upon a robbery in progress, opened fire, hitting the suspect who died at the scene. The security guard was not injured. And the search is underway for a hit-and-run driver after a man is killed trying to cross the street at Rosemead Boulevard and Fern Street in South El Monte. 
Authorities say the unidentified middle-aged man was crossing Rosemead around 10:30 last night. One driver was able to avoid hitting him. Another driver was not hitting him. They stayed at the scene, but a third driver drove over the man and then fled the scene. Officials are not sure which driver killed that pedestrian who was pronounced dead at the scene. No one has yet been cited or arrested. Eyewitnesses returns with these new stories. A bizarre scene in Texas where a camel goes wild, leaving two people dead. And a brazen criminal is caught on video. We'll show you what a family was startled to find after setting up a security camera. And it's a very special day for dozens of Catholic parents and their children baptized by the Pope himself. Can we pull up that Pope video too when um, when you're done? It has become a staple at many live sporting events across the country. We're talking, of course, about the Kiss Cam, always a fan favorite. Well, the latest Kiss Cam video to go viral is causing a bit of controversy. Was it real or staged? ABC's David Wright has the story. Courtesy of the New York Knicks, an old joke with a new punchline. Her boyfriend clearly isn't interested in the Kiss Cam, so she goes for the next best thing. And the crowd goes bananas. The kiss cam waits for no man. Not the future king of England. Not even the kisser in chief. Such is the tyranny of the jumbotron. Personally, I hate the kiss cam. Uh, I do not go to sporting events to make out. If you go to a game, watch the game. If you'd like to kiss your date, that's terrific. But take her someplace where she's the focus of your affection and not LeBron James, all right? Your lady deserves better. How the other person responds can be as unpredictable as the action in the game. An opportunity for humor, an invitation for lust, and of course, the distinct possibility of humiliation in front of 30,000 people. This guy picked beer over his girlfriend. Another proposed only to have his girlfriend say no. I guess she needs oh. time to think about it. At a Lakers game, John C. Riley and Will Farrell just went for it. President George H.W. Bush didn't hesitate when it was his turn. President Obama got an instant replay when the camera found him again. A presidential smooch. The question we had for the Knicks today, was this moment staged? They wouldn't comment, but agreed it sure was fun. Not to mention a cautionary tale for boyfriends the world over. David Wright, ABC News. Pay attention. Do you know how you know that was 
stage. How? How's that? Because the other guy didn't leave the game with a black eye. Well, <laughs> well, we don't know what happened That's after. True. We don't know. Yeah, there's the follow <laughs> through cam. He didn't seem at to the end there. Yeah. No, not at all. Jeez. I'm a big fan of the kiss cam. I yeah. I think it's miracle. very entertaining. Yeah. I find it very, very fun. <laughs> very fun. You know, <laughs> to watch and Keep participate. <laughs> That's right. Both ways, viewing and being part of the whole deal. Uh, okay, well, like, here's a forecast you can kiss. You're going to love this one. Sunshine by the middle of the week after we get done with some more, a little more rain left in. Let's go outside. Live Bank of Doppler 7000 HD. Uh, the scope is starting to clear out, uh, but there's still a lot of moisture in the air. And some of it will be hitting the ground through the overnight and very early morning hours. So we're keeping a slight chance of those showers in there. We're showing in some areas that have uh, the rain coming down. Even some snow and ice mixed in around Wrightwood, Mount Baldy. Light rain with a light green there. Same around Big Bear, Crestline. Light rain and then some snow and ice mixed in as well. And outside right now, we've got a gorgeous view of Irvine Spectrum Camera. So Orange County under cloudy skies at the moment. No rain reported. Downtown LA, cloudy skies there as well. And the rain that came down over the last 24 hours, that's a pretty good amount. 59 degrees right now, 90% relative humidity. And today our temp, 68 degrees. The average temp, 63 is all we got to. And then we'll see sun rising up tomorrow at 659. Here's our rain total so far, right about where we should be this time of year, 5.64. And the last system through downtown in the last 24 hours picked up 0.48, almost half an inch of rain. As we look ahead now, we can see the low that's causing all the rain now starting to exit out of our area. And as it moves out, it takes with us all that moisture and all that cooler air. But now what's going to take its place will be this high, this ridge right here. That gives everything now offshore. So now we're getting heat. We're getting dry conditions, and we're going to see temperatures start to change. Looking ahead now, seven-day power back. Your weather, we've got a look here. L.A. Metro and Orange County. I'm leaving in a slight chance of showers overnight, very early morning hours. But then warming starts by Tuesday, even more so. Sunny skies Wednesday and Thursday, and then temps stay in the mid 70s through the week, starting to cool down into the weekend. Numbers to the 60s for the valleys and the Inland Empire. Again, more early morning chance of showers, only 20 percent. But then here comes the sunshine, warming up 70s by Wednesday and Thursday. The valleys up to 75, 74 on Friday, and then a cool down into the weekend. For the beach areas, we're going to see, a, again, a cloudy start to the day, both Monday and Tuesday. Monday, a uh, chance of showers. Tuesday, a little morning fog. And then here comes the heat of the afternoon. 70s at the beaches, Wednesday and Thursday. Marine layer returns, cool things down Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Mountain areas will have that chance of showers tomorrow. And then cool and windy conditions through the week. Temperatures rise up from the 40s to the 50s and take that into the weekend. Just a few clouds start to drop in on Sundays. Look to the high desert. There are partly cloudy skies. And then sunny and windy conditions through the week. For the desert, temps not bad at all. Upper 50s, low 60s for the highs. The thing to watch will be at nighttime. The lows there will be in the 20s and 30s, so certainly cool at night. But heck, warm up. Kiss somebody. <laughs> that Why not? Up. Yes. Okay. Right. Would well, you have a kiss cam or not? <laughs> Honey, here's yeah. a kiss cam. You know, you it's it. like mistletoe. I'm saying. It just works. That's Thanks, right. Danny. Okay, do. With the real estate market warming up, you can pretty much expect a bidding war for that dream home. One estimate says nearly half of all homes for sale receive dueling offers. Tonight, one woman in California accused of harassing the people who outbid her found out her fate for allegedly plotting dangerous pranks against them. ABC's Mara Schiavacampo has that story. For 53-year-old Kathy Rowe, this was the perfect house in a good school district for her disabled daughter and with a pool for her husband. But that dream home led to a nightmare landing her in court. Roe, who was once named Mom of the Year in a local contest, facing a judge after prosecutors say she harassed the couple who outbid her on the house. It was a calculated, sustained, and malicious attack on the well-being of my entire family. According to court documents, prosecutors say Rowe stopped the couple's mail, sent unwanted subscriptions to the home, wrote Valentine's Day cards in the husband's name to married women in the neighborhood, and even posting a fake Craigslist ad posing as the wife looking for sexual encounters while her husband was away. The house became my prison. As soon as one door was opened, it was immediately locked behind me. Friday, Roe came face to face with the couple in court. Just, I, I'm just very sorry. 
sorry and now under surveillance. A judge sentencing her to a year of electronic monitoring, five years probation and 10 years of no contact with the victims after she pleaded guilty to stalking for the Craigslist ad. You said that you didn't want to hurt them. I think that's exactly what you wanted to do, was to hurt them. One woman's punishment for real estate revenge. Mara Schiavocampo, ABC News, New York. Things are slowly moving again in Michigan. Two days after that deadly highway pileup, the westbound lanes of Interstate 94 in Kalamazoo County have now been reopened. Yes, that is the right video. Fireworks at a crash. A truck carrying those fireworks caught fire, triggering a spectacular explosion during Friday's extraordinary pileup on the roadway. State police say it was among the 193 vehicles involved in that massive crash that included dozens of semi-trucks. A 57-year-old Canadian trucker was killed in the crash, and about two dozen others were injured. A wild scene in Texas where an out-of-control camel kills two people. It happened at the Camel Kisses Farm. The Wichita County Sheriff says a man went into a pen to break up ice in the water trow, and that's when the uh, sheriff says a camel charged. A woman tried to close the gate to the area, but the camel was too fast and trampled both people to death. Game wardens killed the camel. The sheriff says the camel was acting aggressively because it was getting ready to breed. People set up security cameras inside their homes for a reason, but when you actually do catch a criminal in action, it can be pretty scary. Take a look. This is surveillance video shot inside of a woman's home in Fresno. The camera captures a burglar breaking into the house in broad daylight. The man climbed in through a window in the kitchen and tripped the alarm, but police say he still managed to steal some electronics before officers arrived on scene. Luckily, that woman was not home at the time. And police in Evansville, Indiana, say it's one of the most disturbing things they have ever seen. While conducting an undercover investigation, they came across this video of a one-year-old boy playing with a handgun. You can see the child holding the gun, his fingers on the trigger, several times even putting the barrel into his mouth. Police say the baby's 22-year-old mother and her 19-year-old boyfriend recorded the video. The two have been arrested on several charges, including child neglect. Disturbing. Wow. An Italian businessman who has climbed St. Peter's Basilica five times to protest Italian government reforms that he says is costing him his business will be put on trial by the Vatican. The Vatican says the man faces charges including defaming and defacing a place of worship. The Vatican is going through with the trial this time after a Christmas protest when he climbed over the Basilica's main entrance. Trial is set to begin February 7th. And a special day at the Vatican for dozens of Catholic parents. Pope Francis baptized 33 babies at a ceremony in the Sistine Chapel this morning. The 13 infant boys and 20 girls, including a set of twins, are all children of Vatican employees. The pontiff pronounced each baby's name and poured water from a golden shell-shaped cup onto their foreheads during the ceremony, welcoming them into the faith. The baptism is part of an annual tradition marking the end of the Christmas season. Ahead on Eyewitness News, a new film has taken the top spot at the box office. We'll look at the weekend winners. Plus, we go behind the scenes of the new ABC comedy Gallivant and show you what it takes to get all its cast members to look the part.
Liam Neeson takes down The Hobbit after three weeks atop the box office. Dustin, by now I'm sure you know who I am. You know what I'm capable of. I am beginning to. Taken 3 nabbed the top spot with an estimated $40.4 million in ticket sales. The third installment of the 20th Century Fox thriller series stars Neeson as a vengeance-seeking retired CIA operative with a very particular set of skills. Paramount's civil rights drama Selma arrived in second place with $11.2 million. Into the Woods was third, bringing in $9.7 million. The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies was a close fourth. It earned $9.4 million and Unbroken rounded out the top five. The new medieval musical comedy Gallivant is not your typical TV show and neither are the costumes. Entertainment guru George Pinocchio found that out firsthand when he visited the set in England. You know the expression, it takes a village? No, no I don't think that's no. what it meant, it does take a village of sorts to dress the cast of Gallivant in medieval attire, and it takes time. The wardrobe team will generally spend about 20 minutes getting each actor dressed. They're very understanding. They know they want to look good, and they know what goes into it. But yes, we have to consider their, their, the heat which goes on underneath the costumes. They, they wear ice packs underneath their costumes. Um, also, our, it, the women wear very little, so the men are very warm, but the women are very cold because they're in very flimsy silk dresses. So again, we have heat packs for them, hot water bottles constantly being made. 300 or so costumes also had to be made. And to get it all done, they sourced work out to experts in England, Wales, and Spain who constructed costumes, then deconstructed them a little. The costumes need to be broken down so they look like they've been in battle, some of them. Not too much. This is still Galavant. We aren't going too extreme with our dirt. It is about to get very messy again. Oh, my teeth. Thank you very much. From the king on down, the costume designers helped set the scene. And they helped me get out of my suit and into the medieval spirit, one step at a time. I quickly learned transforming into a knight is no small task. Can anyone get dressed by him or herself here? Not usually. <laughs> Next, some protective chain mail for my head. Then armor for my arms and my chest. In all, about 25 pounds worth of wardrobe. Then I think, wouldn't it be fun to be a royal? I'm pretty sure there's a crown for me somewhere. I'm pretty sure there is. You'll be the king of the knights. And one crown later... Ta-da! And of course, I'd never forget the most important piece of metal. In Bristol, England, George Pinocchio, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. So loyal to the Circle 7. Got to make sure it's there. <laughs> We're updating our top stories at 7.30. Also, a Chris Brown performance is abruptly interrupted as gunfire rings out in the middle of the concert. Terry Reid may be injured worse than first thought. What the senator is now saying about his injuries is suffered in an exercising accident. And the search for the black boxes from the Air Asia plane that crashed into the Java Sea appears to have come to an end.
Live from ABC7, this is Eyewitness News at 7.30 p.m. on LA56. Our top story at 7.30 today in Paris, the largest demonstration in French history in the wake of the attacks. I'm Giovanna Lotta. I'm Jory Rand. This is Eyewitness News on LA 56, LA's only live local newscast at 7.30 p.m. More than a million demonstrators filled the streets of Paris today. They were joined by more than 40 world leaders who marched with their arms linked. Demonstrators waved the French flag and held up signs reading, Je suis Charlie, I am Charlie. More than 2,000 police were deployed to protect those demonstrating. Another day of wet weather. The Santa Ana River was really flowing with all the rain that was coming down. A lot of debris and trash flowed into the river, making things a bit messy. Overnight, a truck driver crashed on the eastbound lanes of the 10 freeway in Santa Monica. Another car was also damaged at the scene. At least one person was rushed to the hospital. How long will this wet weather stick around? Danny Romero has the answer. All right, thanks, Giovanna and Jory. Uh, happy Sunday night to you. Yeah, there's still some moisture in the air, so the answer, yes, is sticking around a little while longer, but not nowhere near as widespread as it was earlier in the weekend. We're seeing a lot of areas that are dry at the moment over Southern California, but we'll find some spots where we'll see some moisture, precipitation coming down. Light rain indicated by the light green, so we're seeing some of that up south of Little Rock around Wrightwood, but also... The gray and the white areas indicate some snow and ice around the upper elevation. 7,000 feet and above are showing some of that. Light rain towards Crestline up around Big Bear. We're seeing some snow and ice there off uh, south of the lake, but otherwise we're seeing more light rain on the live bank at Opera 7,000 HD. Our downtown L.A. skies are cloudy right now, and we certainly have some pretty good rain coming down in some spots. Last 24 hours, we measured 0.65 in Chino. Anaheim topped off at 0.80 inch of rain. Fillmore got over an inch at 1.41, over an inch and a half in Camarillo at 1.54, and Oxnard picked up 1.67, some pretty good rain amounts there. Now, we're pretty much done with this, and then things really change for us as far as the weather's concerned. I'll tell you about that when I come back with the seven-day forecast in just a little bit. It's right now, Jory and Giovanna. Go ahead. Okay, Danny, we'll see you then. Five people were shot and injured at a San Jose nightclub where Chris Brown was performing for a private party. It happened just before 1.30 this morning near the Fiesta nightclub. Police say Brown was not injured and that all five people shot are expected to survive. Brown was seen on cell phone video posted online by fans reacting to those shots, then being ushered off stage. Eyewitnesses say the gunshots came out of nowhere. The crowd was dancing, telling themselves, and then next thing you know, they're pushing and shoving. And then um, we heard two shots, like pow, pow, and everybody got down. And then everybody just... They got up again and they heard a third shot. I thought it was something like related with the music, then all of a sudden, like, because I think it was like two gunshots or something like that, and after it was more, and then it's when you tried to realize when somebody was there shooting and shooting. Police say they're still looking for a motive for the shooting. They have detained several people, but say the shooter has not been arrested. Two members of the famed Tuskegee Airmen, the all-black squadron that flew in World War II, died in Los Angeles on the same day. Family members say Clarence Huntley Jr. and Joseph Chambray were both 91 years old and died last Monday in their homes. The two men were friends who enlisted together in 1942. They served as mechanics in Italy during World War II and serviced the planes of the all-black squadron. The hunt for the only known living suspect linked to the Paris terrorist attacks has gone international. Hayat Boumedien escaped France before the attacks, fleeing to Spain, then to Turkey, before eventually crossing into Syria. Al-Qaeda in Yemen initially claimed responsibility, but today there's new information about Boumedien's life partner. An image from a video posted by an ISIS supporter shows Ahmadi Koulibaly claiming credit for the terrorist attacks and pledging support to ISIS. 17 people were killed during the attacks at a magazine, Charlie Hebdo, and at a kosher supermarket. And a newspaper in Hamburg, Germany, becomes the target of arsonists after that newspaper republished the cartoons of that French weekly, Charlie Hebdo. The Hamburger Morgen Post said several files in its archives were destroyed. Two men were detained, and no one was hurt in the fire. The Hamburg tabloid, along with several other German newspapers, published the cartoons the day after the attack in Paris to express solidarity with the murdered journalists. They are now getting police protection. 
British Prime Minister David Cameron is set to meet with President Obama next week. Cameron will travel to Washington to meet with the President at the White House. The meetings are set for Thursday and Friday. Their conversations are expected to include talk about the terror group ISIS. They are also expected to discuss cybersecurity, Russia, trade, and Ebola. And the White House is planning to host a summit next month aimed at preventing violent extremism. A news release from the Office of the Press Secretary notes the summit is scheduled for February 18th. According to the release, the summit will focus on domestic and international efforts to combat attacks by violent extremists. We're learning more tonight about just how badly Senate Minority Leader Harry Reid was injured during a recent exercising accident. Reid told a Nevada public radio station that he doesn't know if he'll ever see out of one of his eyes again. He was injured on New Year's Day when a piece of exercise equipment broke, throwing him into some nearby cabinets. In addition to the injured eye, Reed suffered a concussion and several broken ribs. Doctors say they are hopeful he will regain sight, but they have to wait and see if he does. Reed did not return to Capitol Hill for last week's opening session of Congress. And we're hearing from California Senator Dianne Feinstein on possible criminal charges against former CIA Director David Petraeus. He is accused of giving classified information to his biographer and former mistress, Paula Broadwell. I don't know whether he directly gave material to her or not. I know she had access to classified data by her own classification, so it's murky. But be that as it may, it's done, it's over, and um, he's retired, uh, he's lost his job. I mean, how much does government want. Feinstein went on to say that Petraeus' affair was a mistake, but he should not face criminal charges for it. Officials say divers have retrieved a black box from the crashed Air Asia flight found at the bottom of the Java, Java Sea. The plane's tail section was brought ashore yesterday, but the cockpit voice and flight data recorders were no longer attached. Indonesian ships had detected pinging sounds coming from two areas. Divers had about two weeks left before the signals from those boxes go silent. Meanwhile, 48 bodies of the 162 people on board have now been recovered. Officials believe most of the bodies are still inside the main fuselage, which has yet to be found. Rough seas continue to hamper the search and re uh, recovery operation. Much more news still to come here on Iowa Diffuse on LA 56. Up next, protests erupt at a local Whole Foods. Find out what has animal rights activists, both here and across the country, so upset. Plus, a tiny chihuahua born with no front legs is now inspiring others. We'll take you to a unique event where people got to meet this special dog.
covering Costa Mesa, Pasadena, Camarillo, and all of Southern California. This is Eyewitness News. Protests were staged across the country and in Canada against Whole Foods. Animal rights activists say the chain suppliers are guilty of animal abuse. Today, protesters walked through a Whole Foods in Pasadena. Animal rights groups are raising concerns about Petaluma Farms, a Northern California farm that supplies eggs to Whole Foods. Our investigation, and we just released a video of their certified humane farm, shows that all of the animals are suffering, that they are diseased, uh, the animals are dying, slow, painful death, drowning in their own feces. Whole Foods has rejected those allegations, saying they have visited Petaluma Farms and did not see the conditions portrayed in the video. A meet and greet today for Turbo Roo, the tiny chihuahua puppy born with no front legs. A pet store in Long Beach hosted the event so customers could come in and meet Turbo and learn his story. Some vets suggested putting him to sleep, but Ashley Looper, a worker at another vet clinic, said no. She wanted to adopt him. She and her boyfriend fashioned a tiny little wheel... Uh, their scooters actually for Turbo Roo to get around and the images then went viral and Turbo drew the attention of an engineer who then built him an even better scooter. The big thing that we want everyone to take away from Turbo's story is that um, you know you never give up even despite little tiny things or even big things in your life you can always overcome them. The plight of pets like Turbo is leading to uh, breakthroughs in prosthetics for animals, and that's a great thing. Yeah, by the way, if anyone out there is thinking about putting down a dog because it's missing legs, call me immediately. I will adopt that dog <laughs> He will right too. now. Right now. Well, you have a dog with one. Three leg. legs, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Still much more news to come. The Cowboys won last week with the help of a controversial call. Today, controversy saddles their elimination from the playoffs.
it's been nice having rain fall yeah. across Southern California, and right. it's not going to last much longer. No, it, is it? It, I get every last, literally squeeze every last drop out of this thing. There's a little more moisture in the air over Southern California, but yeah, we're seeing some sunshine move in, and by midweek we're going to see 70s at the beach. That's why we live here. Let's go outside and see things looking right now. A Sunday night, a look at the live Mega Opera 7000 HD gives you an idea. There is still some moisture in the air, although less and less as we move through Sunday night. Heading towards the start of the work week. Now, the one spot we do see some moisture that's pretty much been there all day are the mountain areas. So we're showing around Wrightwood, a mixture of light rain and some snow and ice. Mount Baldy as well towards Crestline and Big Bear. Some light rain indicated by the light green and then some snow and ice indicated by like a gray and a white areas there. Outside we go. A live HD camera. The look at Laguna Beach and clouds on the coastal spots. And we're going to find clouds just about everywhere we look. However, the rain pretty much done, except for a few scattered showers here or there in the early morning hours. Our downtown LA camera, cloudy skies there, 59 degrees to temp, 90% relative humidity as that moisture is still there. We can see it all still coming through the area, the low that kind of drove the weather, the rain now starting to track towards our east, moving out of our area. That means now we'll see a ridge of high pressure move in as this high locks into place. Now we go offshore and warm things up, dry things out, and everything changes in the next couple of days. Tonight, though, another night of mild numbers, 49 overnight in San Bernardino, down to 46 in Simi Valley, to 47 in Fillmore and Fraser Park, a cooler 35 overnight. Tomorrow, sun starts to work later in the afternoon, so we will get up to the mid-60s in Santa Clarita, Northridge, and Pasadena. More so in San Bernardino and Riverside, 67 for the highs there in the desert of Palm Springs, up to 70 degrees tomorrow. Now the seven-day power back weather showing you those changing temps. Still, I'm leaving a slight chance of some very early morning showers tomorrow. But then here, here comes the warming, 70s for Tuesday, Wednesday, 75 by Thursday, and then a cool down into next weekend again. Valleys and the Inland Empire watch always go. A little chance of showers. Again, it's very early morning hours tonight, early morning, and then temperatures start to rise, 71 to 75 by Thursday, still 70s into Friday and Saturday before a few clouds move in on Sunday. For the beaches, not bad. We're going to start cloudy and the chance of showers in the early morning hours. Fog Tuesday morning, but the afternoons, more sunshine, enough to get to 74 along the sand on Thursday, cooling down Friday and into the weekend, back to the 60s there. Mountains will be chance of showers again tomorrow, and then things clear out. Then cool and windy is the week ahead. The temps cool in the 40s and 50s, low 50s Friday and Saturday. And those overnight temps in the mountains, 30s and 20s. Cold at night. Bundle up. High deserts, windy and cool just about every day of the week with the highs in the upper 50s and the low 60s. We'll see the overnight numbers. There's where the cold is in the desert. Down in the 20s and 30s overnight. So cold at night, but sunshine and clear the week ahead. Whole different story now. Okay. All right. There you go. Thanks, Danny. Danny, thanks. Kurt's yep. here to talk sports. So a lot of angry Cowboys fans are turning here first. <laughs> Let's talk some hoops. Absolutely. It is officially NBA season for a lot of Cowboys, Broncos, dare I say a few other teams. Yeah. Lakers are back in action tonight taking on the Portland Trailblazers at Staples Center. Kobe did not dress for this one, folks. In fact, this is the sixth game in 11 that he's missed. Portland ended the first half catching the Lakers on a 10-2 run. They take a five-point lead into the break. We'll have your complete highlights on Eyewitness News at 11. As for the Clippers, they've been hot this year in a matinee, but the Heat is the team, ironically, that pulled them off. L.A. down by point, off the break. Watch Jamal Crawford. Easy stuff, right? Not so easy. Although, Blake Griffin says, I've got you, pal. Nice cleanup. He had 26 points. Then Matt Barnes gets blocked there, and that sparks the heat run. They go to the corner to the former Chicago Bull. Luel Dang, the kid out of Duke, just pops it. They're up by 13. Chris Bosch led everyone with 34 points. That served as your dagger as the heat cool off the Clippers, 104 to 90. Well, 47 seasons after the Ice Bowl, Dallas and Green Bay meeting at Lambeau Field again. Dallas led until this play in the fourth quarter when Aaron Rodgers zips it to Richard Rodgers. It's 26-20. Biggest play of the game. Fourth and two. 440 left. They go for the dagger. There's Brian, a sensational catch and a controversial one. See, the Packers did not win a challenge all year. They challenged this play and they won, sealing the Seattle trip uh, for the Packers, and Dallas goes home in a shadow of controversy, 26-21. Jury said it best. That's a touchdown. Number 18, starting his 17th season, Peyton Manning. Corner connection on the opening drive. 
Denver looked like it would dominate this game, but that served as the wake-up call for Andrew Luck. He had a sensational game, finds Dwayne Allen there. Colts led 14-10 to 10 in the third, and this is really what did it in for Denver. Hakeem Nix pulls down this start, and with that, Indy moves on to take on New England in the AFC Championship next week, 24-13. Speaking of championships, there's a doozy tomorrow night. Oregon and Ohio State for the first ever national championship with a playoff game. You can catch that game on ESPN or the Watch ESPN app. Hockey now, the injury to King's wingman. Tanner Pearson feared to be more severe than first thought. Pearson's going to be out of action because he broke his ankle going hard into the boards. That's just hard to watch. Well, they tied last night with Winnipeg. Winnipeg had actually took that game in a shootout. So they don't know how long he's going to be out, but he had 12 goals this year, which is going to be very tough. And Duck fans, Tamu Solani, they raised his number to the banners tonight. Very emotional scene. We'll show you that at 11. The Finnish Clash. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks Kurt. Kurt. New tonight on Eyewitness News at 11 on ABC7. She was seen on camera being forced into an SUV, and now she's vanished. The search for this missing woman. And a gun pointed at a clerk's head, the terrifying holdup, and what the gunman dropped on the way out the door. Those stories and all the late-breaking news on Southern California's number one newscast, Eyewitness Eyewitness News at 11 on ABC7. Well, up next here on Eyewitness News on LA56. A woman finds a unique way to tell her husband she's expecting, and we'll show you what she did coming up. Triplets are rare, but imagine identical triplets. Jace and Jody Kinsey welcomed three identical boys into the world back in December in Montana. On Saturday, the media got the chance to meet Milo, Ian, and Cade. 
Identical triplets can be more common if fertility drugs are used, but there were none used here with Cade, Ian, and Milo. They are spontaneous, identical triplets. It's kind of almost overwhelming because when you think about, you know, when they get old, a little bit older, are they all going to play the same sports? Or are you going to go 50 million different directions and be able to still teach all of them, you know, or help all of them as much as you can? And But I, I can't wait for that to come. I'm, I'm so ready. All three triplets are healthy and will head home in the near future. By the way, the odds of identical spontaneous triplets, they're about one in a million. They'll join their older brother, six-year-old Jax, at home. A big congratulations to them. A Minneapolis woman slyly broke the news to her husband that they are expecting a baby. She filmed his reaction in a photo booth. They later shared their special moment online where it has been viewed millions of times. Reporter Nina Moini has the video and spoke to the parents-to-be. <laughs> When they decided to share this very personal moment, Michael and Jessica Devon say they just wanted one thing. I just posted it thinking, you know, someone might find inspiration in it someday. The video found its way into the hearts of millions of people. What is going on right now? <laughs> Strangers reaching out with their support for the parents-to-be. There's a lot of hard things going on in the world, and I think that it really helps just bring a bright smile to someone's day. The Minneapolis couple captures moments for a living, working as photographers. They have a lot of snapshots. Photo booths are like our thing. Everything from Disney to their engagement. Then about six months ago, Jessica decided to start recording their trips to different photo booths. Just capturing fun, silly faces. We have so many photos, we don't have room on our wall. Now we're doing videos, too. <laughs> but Jessica had a plan. She wanted to record, like, little moments, so Michael wouldn't see this one coming. Together. So my mind is like racing trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, so it's kind of a little off guard. Eventually, inside this photo booth at Pizzeria Lola in Minneapolis, where hundreds of memories already line the walls, Jessica and Michael made their greatest one yet. There's no, oh my gosh, what happens next reveal. It's just a genuine moment. Very sweet. Again, that was Nina Moini reporting. Jessica Devon's announcement was recorded in September, but they did not post it online until just a few weeks ago. Jessica is now 19 weeks into her pregnancy. She and her husband say they expect to learn the baby's gender next week. Good stuff. Yeah. yeah. And thank you for joining us here for ABC 7 at 7. Eyewitness News on LA 56. LA 56 Weekend Theater is next. Eyewitness News continues at 11 p.m. on ABC 7 and anytime on ABC7.com. Remember, you can get your news 24 hours a day on our website, ABC 7, our Facebook page, and on Twitter. See you tomorrow night at 7 right here on LA 56 and at 11 o'clock on ABC 7.